Take a look at this wild integral. If you were in Calc 2, you would probably start off with a trig substitution. Let's give it a try. See that x squared plus 1 in the denominator? That looks an awful lot like the trig identity tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. So if we let x equal tangent theta and substitute that into the denominator, we'll get that identity. We'll have to substitute tan theta in for x in the numerator, and since we're changing the variable, we're going to need to change the differential. Let's take the derivative to get dx. That'll be the derivative of tangent theta, which is secant squared theta d theta. Lastly, let's just change those x bounds to u bounds. If we plug in 0 for x, we'll see that's also 0 for theta. If we plug in 1 for x, that will be pi over 4 for theta. So we've transformed our integral, but we're not quite at a place where we can integrate this yet. Sometimes it's easier to rewrite trig functions in terms of sine and cosine. Let's do that. Tangent is sine over cosine. And let's go ahead and combine with the plus 1, get a common denominator. We'll have sine plus cosine over cosine inside that logarithm. When you have the log of a quotient, it's just screaming to use properties of logarithms. So let's do the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. Things seem to be cleaning up quite nicely, but we're still no closer to actually integrating this. We know sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, but what about sine to the first plus cosine to the first? Inside the logarithm, no less. This is where things get a little bit tricky. Notice that we're already subtracting a log of cosine. Maybe we can rewrite sine plus cosine in terms of just cosine. Essentially, we're going to derive a less well-known trig identity. Let's just say sine plus cosine equals some constant times cosine of theta plus some other constant. Luckily, we do have the very well-known trig identities for cosine of a sum or a difference. Let's just apply that here. We have sine thetas on the left, we have sine thetas on the right, we have cosine thetas on the left, we have cosine thetas on the right. Let's do matching coefficients. The coefficients on the left side are 1. The coefficients on the right side, well, they're a little more complicated, but they have to equal 1. Now we can take advantage of the fundamental trig identity, square both sides of both these equations, and add them up. Then we can factor out the constant, Sine squared plus cosine squared, that's 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. This lets us solve for one of our constants as square root of 2. Substitute this value back into those two equations and take the inverse trig functions. It'll let us solve for that other constant we were looking for. And so whether you realize it or not, sine theta plus cosine theta can be written as square root of 2 cosine theta minus pi over 4. So now, once again, we have the log of a product. Let's just split that up into separate logarithms, and we'll use properties of logarithms to drop that exponent down front. Time for the fun part. Maybe you don't think we've actually done anything to help us integrate this. Well, we can integrate that first part. It's just a constant, so that's not really a big deal. But look at those two cosines inside the logarithm. They're pretty similar. One's just theta, the other is theta minus pi over 4, and we're integrating from 0 to pi over 4. Cosine is an even function, so theta minus pi over 4 is the same as pi over 4 minus theta when it's inside cosine. Do a u substitution here. Let u equal pi over 4 minus theta. That means du equals minus d theta, and this integral can be rewritten as negative natural log cosine of u du, to change the bounds, when theta is pi over 4, u will be 0, and when theta is 0, u will be pi over 4. So look at these two definite integrals. They're the same thing. Their underlying variables are different, but if we were to compute the integrals, the values would be exactly the same. We have an addition of one, a subtraction of the other, and so they cancel each other out. All that's left to do is anti-derive this constant by multiplying it by theta, substitute in pi over 4, and there you go is our answer to that slick definite integral. If you like seeing super cool integrals, click the video on the screen. I'll see you in that one.